What is going on, Pats Nation? It's your boy, Colby with Patriots Global, back here with another video. And of course, with another day of OTAs open to the media, that means that we actually got some news on the practices that are happening with this team at Gillette Stadium. Now, of course, you guys aren't seeing photos on the screen right now, and you might be asking Patriots Global, where are the usual photos that you show while talking about OTAs? Well, for some reason, the team decided that they weren't going to have their usual photographers at OTA practices today, so unfortunately, you guys are getting a video like this because there are just no videos to show. As always, guys, though, on your way in, make sure you do leave a big like on the video. You leaving a like on the video is not just for looks. It helps us significantly with the YouTube algorithm by you liking this video, commenting, and even sharing the video if you want to, maybe if you like the video. It puts us at the top of the YouTube algorithm and helps get the channel and the videos noticed significantly more. So it would mean the world to me if you did. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already for all of your New England Patriots news. But like I said, this is going to be day two of Patriots OTAs that are open to the media. With that being said, this is an actual day two of OTAs. We honestly, at least us as fans, don't necessarily know what day of OTAs it is. We just know that this is the second day that media availability has been given. So let's just hop into this. Today's absences were a lot more than they were on day one of OTAs. By the way, did a recap of OTAs day one if you guys want to go ahead and check that out. But today's absence, we have rookie quarterback Joe Milton, supposedly his sister or a family member of sorts was graduating, I want to say, from college. So this might have been an excused absence. There are rumors circulating that there could potentially be an illness going on in the Patriots locker room, which is why we see a lot of these guys out. Also, Kendrick Bourne, no surprise there about him. We already know that he is not going to be participating in any spring activities as he still rehabs that season-ending injury. Zuri Henry, that UDFA that honestly throughout now two practices of OTAs, throughout, uh, what was it, rookie mini camp, he has not been at practice. He's been absent, it sounds like, in every single practice, but he was with the rest of the Patriots offensive linemen at the Celtics game the other week, so he is still on the team, but maybe dealing with an injury. We don't know what's going on with him. We honestly might not find out till training camp, uh, but Cole Strange, again, he's month to month, so we probably won't see him anytime soon. Jake Andrews, who was that interior offensive lineman guard slash center from Troy that the Patriots drafted in 2023 last year. Supposedly, he had a brace on, so he could be dealing with some type of injury. Matthew Judon, obviously not here, uh, but he did say that, he'll, that he will be here for mandatory minicamp in a few weeks. Josh Uche, Christian Barmore, Devon Godchow, Sam Roberts, Jelani Tavai, Sione Takitaki, and Jonathan Jones. The majority of these guys on this list don't really matter, but then you see a couple of guys where you're like, you know, Sam Roberts and Sione Takitaki, Honestly, probably not even Sione Takitaki, more somebody like Sam Roberts, who you say, dude, you're fighting for roster spot. You should probably attend practice as much as you possibly can, obviously seeming that he isn't injured. If he's injured, don't come to practice. But, you know, if, if you're perfectly fine, you're fighting for a roster spot, you should be here. I would say the same thing about Sione Takitaki. He should be here just from a standpoint that he's with the new team in the Patriots this offseason. But honestly, there doesn't seem to be any competition for that third down linebacker position that the Patriots are, are kind of trying to um, re revamp up, for lack of better words, that that role that um, Mac Wilson was in last year. With Sione Takitaki be the only guy in that role, really no competition. Honestly, whether he's here or not, he's a veteran, probably really doesn't matter all that much. Moving on here, though, to the guys that were limited. City So sounds like he is also dealing with some type of injury. It sounds like these offensive linemen for the past, especially these interior offensive linemen, these, you know, year one and year two guys, they're the guys that are dealing with the injuries for the majority 
Um, and that's obviously not ideal concerning the injury bug bit the Patriots pretty early on and especially throughout the entirety of this past season, something you don't want to happen again. The Pats did have a couple of guests show up today, though. Patrick Chun, Ivan Fears, and Steve Belichick. No surprise there, though, that Ivan Fears was at Patriots practice. Although he retired a couple of years ago, Patriots former running backs coach, he is still heavily involved with the team, especially during the offseason, shows up a lot to help out these running backs. So that's always a a good little addition there. But again, this was an OTA practice. It was an overall more competitive day compared to what we saw from day one of OTAs, but it was still shorts and shells and no real contact. But Moving on to the quarterbacks here, 11 on 11s, Jacoby Brissett was 6 for 8, Bailey Zappi was 6 for 9, and Drake May was 4 for 6. On 7 on 7s, Jacoby Brissett was 7 for 7, Bailey Zappi was 4 for 7 with an interception, and Drake May was 12 for 14. Overall, Drake May through two OTA practices is looking pretty damn good. The one thing that is bothering me, though, bothering me though is the order of quarterback reps. Brissett, Zappy Drake May. It's the same thing that we saw in the last OTA practice that was open to the media. And after that practice, Gerard Mayo says, don't look too much into, you know, the, the, the lineup and the order of the players, whether that's on the offensive line or the quarterbacks. But Gerard Mayo, we're going to look specifically at these types of things because it says a lot about what you think of these players and how they're being utilized and the plans of the upcoming season. And especially while there's no football, these little things are something we are going to nitpick. And I said this last time, I'm going to continue to say it because this is now the consecutive practice that has been open to media where Drake May is the third quarterback in the rotation. I don't understand why. I don't understand what the plan is. We know that for the start of training camp, it's likely that one of these four quarterbacks is not going to be on the roster and that it really makes the most sense that Bailey Zappi would be the guy on the outside looking in. At the end of the day, you drafted Drake May third overall in this draft. Usually, when you draft a quarterback in the first round, that guy is either starting week one or he's starting in some capacity in his rookie season. And if Bailey, or not Bailey Zappi, but if Drake May is at a point where he's just so raw, he's not ready yet, then he should be getting second team reps, especially this early on in the process to, dry, to try to develop him um, for the offseason so that he can hopefully start at some point this upcoming season. So I still don't like the order. Obviously, we'll see how this continues to occur. Is this the same thing that happens during mini camp? Is this the same thing that's happening during training camp? If this is the quarterback order that is still happening by the start of training camp, I am going to riot. Drake May needs the most second most snaps out of every single one of these quarterbacks. Jacoby Brissett, obviously, he's going to be starting week one. He's the guy that should be getting quarterback one reps. He should be building chemistry, you know, with his offensive line, within the system, and of course, his receivers. But even then, he knows this system with Alex Van Pelt, so he doesn't necessarily need a ton of reps and a ton of experience. If you want Drake May to take over for you at some point this season, or even in 2025, which drafting him in the third overall pick, that's obviously the plan, he should be getting these reps to develop. But now that I went on my tangent, we can continue on. Jacoby Brissett threw a great ball in seven-on-sevens to Tyquan Thornton, where he threaded the needle between a pair of defenders. Tyquan Thornton, yet again, is coming back with the offseason hype, just like he did a year ago. Respectfully, I'm not buying into it. He's a speedster, the type of receiver that he is. They These guys usually stand out in OTA settings. Let's keep in mind that Again, this time last year, Tyquan Thornton was standing out. Devontae Parker was the Patriots' best shining receiver throughout practices all of last offseason, and then it, of course, never translated. But speaking of Drake May, he threw a good ball to Juju Smith-Schuster along the sidelines. It was said that he sold a really good uh, pump fake. He held on to the ball, and it uh, held the outside defensive back. Later on, Drake May completed a nice 35-yard pass again to Tyquan Thornton on a slot fade. It was between uh, Victor and Duggar in coverage. Later on, Drake May threw a nice ball to TJ Luther in seven-on-sevens. It was said that he threaded the needle really, really well on a comeback route. Continuing to speak of Drake May, he had a really good sequence where he beat pressure on a uh, rollout to Javon Baker for a completion. Later on, he did have a bad moment where he threw a ball behind Jaheim Bell, and it said that if there was actual contact, if this was an actual game, the ball would have been picked off, and the guy by the ball 
was second year safety slash linebacker Marte Mapu. Jacoby Brissett and Drake May, from what's been said, seem to have a really, really good, strong connection, a really good bond, good support from both of those guys. There was videos and photos. Some of them, I believe, were by Sophie Weller, if I remember correctly, of Jacoby Brissett having his arm around Drake May. They're dabbing each other up. They clearly are best friends, and they're kind of just picking off of each other. So it's not this, like, quarterback battle where there's, you know, adversity between each other and there's kind of this hatred and this competition that's not what it is the roles are understood in this quarterback carousel on you know Jacoby Brissett he's there to be a mentor he's probably going to start week one how much is he going to start this upcoming season we don't know but the plan is for Drake May at some point of course to take over as he is the future Real quick though, guys, I want to give a shout out to the sponsors of this video over at Aura. If you guys want to protect yourselves, your friends, your family, your loved ones, or even if you just say, hey, Patriots Global, I want to support you. I want to support the channel. Go ahead and click the link in the description box and pinned in the comment section below to sign up for a free, yes, a free 14-day free trial over at Aura. What Aura is, is an identity protection service, right? So a lot of us over the last you know, 20 years or so have gotten very much into home security systems, you know, Ring and, and all those other kinds of things um, to keep out people from robbing your house. This is basically what Aura is, but online. A lot of the threats that we all face on a day-to-day -day basis are ones that we can't see, and they're not by people coming up to you and robbing you and robbing your house. The ways that people are, are robbing you these days are by taking your private information and it being sold online without your information. Have you guys ever gotten a text from UPS or FedEx saying that there's an issue with your package and to click a link and you said, wait, I... I didn't order a package. That's because your phone number is being utilized online without your information as be and is being sold without your information. What Aura is going to do once you sign up for that 14-day free trial is that they're going to scan the entire internet, the dark web, and they're going to make sure that your name, your number, your email, your address, your social security number, your credit card information, all of that is nowhere on the web. And if it is, they're going to notify you and they are going to delete it off of the web. Guys, you do not want to wake up one day and see that, you know, someone made a massive purchase with your money. Now your drink account, bank account is drained or that, you know, you're trying to buy a car or a house one day, but now you can't do so because your credit card info, or rather I should say your credit score is messed up. So make sure you guys go ahead and check out Aura, help you save yourself, save your loved ones and save your family. But back to the video. So really for the quarterbacks overall, it was a good day for Jacoby Brissett. It was a good day for Drake May, but Bailey Zappi did struggle a little bit. In terms of Jacoby Brissett, you know, you're not really hearing about him because you know who he is. You know what he's bringing. He's been in the Patriot system before, but he's also been in the Alex Van Pelt system before. So he's kind of just fitting in it like a glove. He does what he's told. The ball goes where it needs to. Everything is just happening the way it needs to. He's not necessarily shining or impressing anybody, but everything's getting done the way it needs to and when it needs to. And that's really all you can ask for a bridge quarterback. But moving on here to the wide receivers, Demario Douglas made a really nice diving catch on a slot fade thrown by Jacoby Brissett. It looks like Demario Douglas, as long as guy can stay healthy, is going to be poised for another really good year too. Javon Baker had a pair of highlight reel catches today in seven on sevens. It was said that he was probably the Patriots best wide receiver today. Uh, it was either him or Tyquan Thornton. First, he had a leaping grab in double co double coverage along the sidelines from Jacoby Brissett, then later jumped over a defensive back for a touchdown from Drake May. Overall, just a really good day from him. He got in the mix, not just with Drake May, but also Jacoby Brissett. So a guy that as long as he can get in the rotation and can get those reps in game, he seems like he's someone who can make an impact. Tycon Thornton overall, like I said, standout day was involved a good amount and his speed with the OTA settings, it stands out. But again, don't take too much away from it because we've seen this storyline before. 
Nothing about the tight ends, but do have a little bit about the offensive line. The first team offensive line was from left to right at left tackle, Chuk Sakura for Antonio Mafi at left guard, David Andrews at center, Nick Leverett at right guard, and then Michael Onwenu at right tackle. This is pretty much the exact same lineup that we saw for the first team offensive line from the first OTA practice. Only difference is that Antonio Mafi is in at left guard. Rather than City So, who again we know was limited, he probably tweaked something at some point during an OTA practice, which is why he was limited today. But something to watch for Antonio Mafi is that the Patriots in recent practices where media wasn't allowed to attend, but just based off of pictures, we did see that Antonio Mafi was also repping in at center. Just something to watch. Uh, that's going to be it for the offense. We did get a little bit of information about defense, which we didn't get last time. Alex Austin had a standout day today. Second year player, the Patriots picked off of waivers this past year, was a rookie selection by the Buffalo Bills last year. Again, Patriots got him off of waivers. He had an interception and a pass breakup. Uh, rookie cornerback Marcellus Dial and second year cornerback Isaiah Bolden also had pass breakups. Alex Austin was also said to have had a dominant rep against rookie wide receiver Javon Baker on a hitch route. Like I said, overall, Really, really good day for Alex Austin. And that's really going to be one of my biggest camp battles to watch in mini camp when all the vets are here. And then, of course, training camp is who is going to be that outside cornerback opposite of Christian Gonzalez as CB2. But not just that. This team loves to operate with three outside corners, not just the, the slot that they have. So who's going to be that third cornerback, right? Is that going to be Alex Austin? Is it going to be Marcellus Dial? Is it going to be Isaiah Bolden? There's a lot of guys in the mix to be that cornerback for CB2 and CB3. And right now, it sounds like Alex Austin is the guy that is standing out. But moving on to safeties, Patriots offseason edition in free agency, uh, who's probably going to be their starting free safety this upcoming season. Jalen Hawkins had a really good day today, too. He had an interception and a pass breakup. He was really the only news we got involving the safeties. But, you know, he's looking good so far. And then in terms of special teams, got a little bit of news on the Chad Ryland development, right? Uh, he was four for five overall on kicks today to end practice. He hit from 31, 33, 36, 36, but then missed from 43. Overall, I'm a little bit concerned from Chad Ryland, right? Like last year, we saw a lot of inconsistencies, but this was a guy that, you know, he could hit from 55 but you are going to get inconsistencies from him, right? Like he'll hit from 55, maybe even give you a 60 yarder, but then from like 30 yards, 35 yards, he's going to miss. Right now, it seems like he's making these easy chip shots, but these longer ones is what he's having issues with, which kind of defeats the entire purpose of why the Patriots drafted him in the first place, but just kind of hoping that he's going to be able to bounce back Overall today, too, in terms of special teams, Javon Baker and Tyquan Thornton were getting special teams reps as gunners. Obviously, the Patriots special teams it needs to be vamped up a little bit, especially because during the offseason, the Patriots did get rid of some core special teamers. Guys like Chris Board, who they were never getting in the rotation defensively. They were core special teamers. The Patriots cut a lot of those guys out. So we're going to see maybe some key players. Again, guys like Baker or Tyquan Thornton playing more regular special team just because you need bodies there. But that is going to recap day two of Patriots OTAs. What were your guys' main takeaways? For me, offensively, it would definitely be the development of Drake May. We saw that he got more reps this time than we did the first OTA practice. And we also know that the coaching staff, you know, uh, Alex Van Pelt, Ben McAdoo, TC McCartney, these are all guys that are just hammering the lower half of the body for all of these quarterbacks. They're working hardcore on footwork right now, which is what not just Drake May, but Joe Milton really needed to work on. So I like that. And I would say defensively, I mean, Alex Austin, Jalen Hawkins, both really, really looking good, both areas of need for the Patriots defensively. So you definitely love what you're hearing so far out of OTAs. Make sure you guys let me know your thoughts still in the comment section below. Remember to leave a big like on the video and of course, subscribe to the channel for all of your New England Patriots news. Appreciate you guys so much for watching. And of course, never forget, go Pats.